In other words, even when we think we're doing the right thing, sometimes we have a dream of community instead of looking at the reality of it. And that's why I, I talk about this around meetings, because meetings is where reality shows up. People come with their brokenness and with their fears and having not done the uh, homework maybe or the assignment or the reading or the preparation. They walk in from life and there they are. Meetings are catalytic, they're transformational, but they're real. And we don't have some idealistic view of community. If you do, if you think every time you gather, you're going to just see transformation galore and the Holy Spirit's gonna show up and lights will go off, you know? I mean, if you have this expectation that's unrealistic, you'll feel sad about every meeting. So let's focus on some key things to do as you work through the material in leading life-changing small groups. Uh, but, but let's talk about a few key things to sort of frame that material. First, make sure every meeting people connect with God and with one another. I think that's very important. You know, I started leading small groups very uh, soon after I was a Christian. Uh, another leader encouraged me, go ahead, try. Without any training, I entered into my first group leader experience. I took a group of four of us, and over a six-week period, I grew that group of four to one. That was me. I had a quiet time in that fourth or fifth or sixth week. It was crazy. And I sat there thinking, maybe I should write a book called How to Turn a Small Group into a Quiet Time because uh, something happened there. I thought I was doing great, but people, even the four of them, started to drop like flies. And at that sixth meeting, I remember sitting there alone thinking, what happened? As I look back, I realized one of the things, probably a key thing I did not do, is help people connect with God deeply and with others relationally. We did the homework, we filled in the blanks, we had some good discussions, we did the perfunctory prayer time and uh, a few other sort of components of group life but we never gelled as a community. And I think uh, I missed a lot, probably because I didn't have the kind of training that I know the church is providing you and I hope that this resource is providing you. So make sure people have that connection with God, listening to God, connecting with God through prayer and scripture and getting to know others. You'll see plenty of resources and helps in leading life-changing small groups to help you connect with God and connect the group with others.